Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to learn about split TCP. So let's get started. Split TCP, one of the major issues that affect the performance of TCP over ad hoc wireless networks is the degradation of the throughput with the increasing path length. As the path length between the source node and the destination node increases, then the throughput of the entire network decreases. The short, that is in terms of path length, the shortest path length connections generally obtain much higher throughput than the long connections. If the path length is very short, then the throughput of that particular path in that uh, network is much higher than those of the long connections. This can also lead to unfairness among TCP sessions where one session may obtain much higher throughput than other sessions because of this path length variations. This unfairness problem is further worsened by the use of MAC protocols such as IEEE 802.11 which are found to give up higher throughput for certain link level sessions leading to an effect known as channel capture effect. This is the most predominant effect which reduces the throughput in the TCP protocol. This effect, channel capture effect, leads to certain flows capturing. Means it will cap the certain flows will be captured by the channel for longer time durations. Therefore, reducing the throughput for other flows. Means the data flows will capture the channel. Means it will consume the bandwidth for longer time. Therefore, by reducing the throughput for the other flows. The channel capture effect can also lead to low overall system through split tcp provides a unique solution to this problem by splitting the transport layer objectives into congestion control and end to end reliability here the name split tcp itself tells that here the transport layer objectives are splitted into congestion control and end to end semantics means reliability connections the congestion control is mostly a local phenomenon means it will be within the local particular number of nodes only not in the entire network due to the result of high contention and high traffic load in the local region. In ad hoc wireless network environment this demands local solutions as this congestion control is a local phenomenon it demands local solutions as well. At the same time Reliability is an end-to-end -end requirement and needs end-to-end -end acknowledgements. Here, reliability is an end-to-end -end requirement in the TCP protocol, right? So, it needs end-to-end -end acknowledgements. In addition to splitting the congestion control and reliability objectives, split TCP also splits a long TCP connection into a set of short concatenated TCP connections called segments or zones with a number of selected intermediate nodes known as proxy nodes as the terminating points of these short connections. I'll explain you with this example. See, let us consider this network. This node 1 is our source node and this node 15 is our um, destination node. For example, if you need, if this source node need to send some data packets to this destination node via this link, this month, this long path length, then this long path length is divided into fewer number of short path lengths. See, for example, this will be, this will choose the path length as follows from 1 to 4, node 1 to node 4 is one of the, see, from 1 to 15 it has to go right, 1 to 15 it has to go right. So, the path lengths will be splitted like this from 1 to 4 it is one of the shortest path and from 14 to 13 it is another shortest path and from 13 to 15. So this long path length is splitted into this three short path lengths and the nodes which terminate this short path lengths are called as proxy nodes. See these yellow highlighted nodes are proxy nodes here. See from node 1 to node 4 it is first short path and from four, node 4 to node 13 is the second shortest path and from node 13 to 15 is the third shortest path and these nodes which terminate this short path is known as proxy nodes. 
proxy they are known as proxy nodes the figure one the figure which i have shown you illustrates the operation of split tcp where a three segment split tcp connection exists between source node 1 and destination node 1 no destination node 15 as i have already told you there are three short paths right so that's what three segment indicates a proxy node receives the tcp packets reads its contents stores it in its local buffer means it will store it store it in its memory and sends an acknowledgement to the source node this acknowledgement is called as local acknowledgement or lag does not guarantee end to end delivery i'll explain you again consider this example if source node sends this data sends a data packet to this node 4 then this node 4 will read the content and it will store it in its memory and it will send lag lag means local acknowledgement to the node source node to uh, in order to intimate the end to end semantics are not possible see which does not guarantee an end to end delivery this is how the packet delivery happens the responsibility of further delivery of packets means the responsibility of further delivery of packets you see transmission doesn't involve only single packet right it involves many number of packets so the responsibility of further delivery of packets is assigned to the proxy node a proxy node clears a buffered packet once it receives lack from the immediate successor proxy node for for that packet i'll explain you this four proxy node will send the packet which it has received from source node to its to the another proxy node that is 13 if it if this 13 sends the lack to four then this four will remove the buffered packet means it will clear that packet from the memory and it reloads another packet another different packet see immediate successor proxy node here in this figure is uh, node 13 right for that packet split tcp maintains the end to end acknowledgement mechanism intact irrespective of the addition of zone wise lags means local acknowledgements the source node clears the buffered packets only after receiving the end to end acknowledgement for those packets as i have already told you if let us consider this example if source node sends a packet to node 4 then this node 4 will read the contents of that packet and it buffers means it will store that packet in its memory and that packet will be sent to this node 13 if this pack and this packet will also buffer it and sends a lag that is local acknowledgement to node 4 then this node 4 will remove that buffered packet this is end to end acknowledgement for the packets i hope you understood it in the figure 1 node 1 initiates a tcp session to the node 15 here node 1 is the source node and node 15 is the destination node node 4 and node 13 are the chosen proxy nodes as i have highlighted them they are the chosen proxy nodes the number of proxy nodes in a tcp session is determined by the length of path between the source and the destination nodes if the length of the path between the source and destination is destination nodes are large then the number of proxy nodes will also be very large right based on the distributed algorithm the intermediate nodes that receive tcp packets determine whether to act as a proxy node or just as a simple forwarding node distributed algorithm is the one which plays an important role in this split tcp it the intermediate nodes means the nodes which uh, the nodes which are in between the source node and the destination node which receives the tcp packets determine whether to act as a proxy node or just to act as a simple forwarding node which will decide that distributed algorithm will decide that the most simple algorithm the most simple the most simple algorithm makes the decision for acting as a proxy node if the packet has already traversed more than a predetermined pre number of hops from the last proxy node or the sender of the tcp session 
the most simple algorithm here is the distributed algorithm which makes the decision for acting as a proxy node if the packet has already traversed more than a predetermined number of hops from the last proxy node or the sender of the tcp session in the figure 1 then the path the path between the node 1 and the node 4 is the first zone or the segment the path between node 4 and the node 13 is the second zone or the segment and the last zone is between the nodes 13 and 15 as i have already told you the long path is divided into three segments right so from node 1 to node 15 we have three paths that is from node 1 to node 4 and from node 4 to node 13 and from node 13 to node 15 see this is the longest path right so we have divided it from 1 to 5 1 to 15 it is divided into three segments from node 1 to node 4 first segment or first zone node 4 to node 13 second segment or second zone node 13 to node 15 third segment or third zone this is what this uh, point illustrates segments zones the proxy node 4 upon receipt of each tcp packet upon receiving of each tcp packet the proxy node sorry for the disturbance the proxy node the proxy node for upon receipt of each tcp packet from source node 1 acknowledges it with a lack packet and buffers the received packets this buffered packet is forwarded to the next proxy node in this case node 13 at a transmission rate at a transmission rate proportional to the arrival of the lacks means local acknowledgments from the next proxy node or the destination let us consider let us consider this figure here source node will send the packet to the node 4 right it will node 4 will what it will do it will buffer the packet and read its content it will send this it will send a local acknowledgement to the source node such that that packet it has sent has been received by this proxy node similarly this four node will send the packet to the 13 also at which rate at a rate at which this local acknowledgement has been sent so that the transmission rate is in sync with the receiver node also means the transmission rate at the rate at which the packets are sent must be uh, must be a reliable one must not be too fast must not be too slow it is determined by using lack local acknowledge the transmission control window at the tcp sender is also split into two windows that is congestion window and the end to end window here the transmission control window means the transmission rate of the packets are controlled by this transmission control window which is at the tcp sender is also split into two windows that is congestion window and the end to end window the congestion window changes according to the rate of arrival of lags means local acknowledgments from the next proxy node means the congestion the congestion window for example let us consider this from 4 to 1 the lag means local acknowledgement transmission rate is faster from 13 to 4 it is slower depending on the rate at which this lag means local acknowledgement pack packets are sent the transmission window also changes according to the rate of the arrival of the local acknowledgement packets from the next proxy window i hope you understand it and the end to end window is updated based on the arrival of end to end acknowledgements see end to end acknowledgement is between destination and the source node this brown color dotted line is the representation of end to end acknowledgement packets you see contention window changes dependent changes are dependent on the local acknowledgement uh, packets transmission rate and whereas end to end window depends on the end to end packet transmission rate i hope you understand it both these windows are updated as per traditional tcp except that the congestion window should stay within the end to end window these the update mechanism of these windows are same as that of the traditional tcp but here congestion window should stay within the end to end window 
in addition to these transmission windows at the tcp sender every proxy node maintains a congestion window that governs the segment level transmission rate i'll explain you for example let us consider this segment first segment that is from node 1 to node 14 if you consider this segment every proxy node in this segment means here we have only node 4 so this node 4 will maintain a congestion window in order to control the packets data flow in this segment that is from one node 1 to node 4 this is what this line states and these are the advantages of of uh, split tcp advantages improved throughput improved throughput fairness lessened impact of mobility throughput improvement is due to the reduction in the effective transmission path length number of hops in the zone or a path length tcp throughput degrades with the increasing path length split tcp has shorter concatenated path segments each operating at its own transmission rate and hence the throughput is increased. This also leads to improved throughput fairness in the system. Since in split TCP, the path segment length can be shorter than the end-to-end -end path length, the effect of mobility on the throughput is lessened. These are the disadvantages. It requires modifications to the TCP protocol. The end-to-end -end connection handling of the traditional TCP is violated. The failure of proxy nodes can lead to the throughput degradation. The traditional TCP has end-to-end -end semantics where the intermediate nodes do not process TCP packets whereas in split TCP the intermediate nodes needs to process the TCP packets and hence in addition to the packet I mean loss of end-to-end -end semantics Certain security schemes that require IP payload encryption cannot be used. During frequent path breaks or during frequent node failures, the performance of split TCP may be affected. Thank you so much. If you find my video worth watching, please do subscribe to my channel.